Rich and Liv first laid eyes on one another 15 years ago. When Rich returned to his student accommodation after seeing Liv for the first time, before he'd ever spoken to her, he announced to his housemates that he'd seen his perfect girl. Little did he know that, fairly soon, he would leave some of his stereotypically laddish ways behind him. <laughs> but they didn't really speak to each other that year, their second of university, unless you count an abortive nightclub smoking area attempt by Rich to chat live up. So we moved to third year, and in this year they worked in the comms lab together as part of their media communications degree. They walked home from uni together a few times, each believed the other couldn't possibly be interested, Rich believed, correctly, that Liv was too good for him. <laughs> Both described themselves as terrible at flirting. In the background, Liv had been telling her twin sister Ellie for ages that she fancied Rich. <laughs> Ellie was like, for fuck's sake, do something about it. Um, and out with Ellie at a nightclub one evening, Liv spotted Rich and excitedly said, that's him, that's him. It took a school playground style intervention to get them together. In this nightclub, Ellie goes up to Rich and says, my sister fancies you. Rich says, that's great news because I fancy your sister. Rich, delighted, confident, emboldened, walks over. He approaches Liv with a swagger. They share a night-long snog on the dance floor. In days of old, a couple might be expected to consummate a relationship today, the day of their wedding. Liv tried to do so immediately in a lift on the way home from the nightclub. Their fate as a couple was sealed soon after. That same night, they broke into the media building of Lincoln Uni in an attempt to broadcast a cheeky first-time shag live from the studio <laughs> of student radio station Siren FM to the three people who may have been listening at the time. They were chased out by security. They arranged a first date at the cinema on the Friday, but unable to wait, Rich was on Liv's doorstep on the Tuesday with an overnight bag and a gleam in his eye. He basically never left. Lib, reflecting on this era, says she clearly recalls how delighted Richard looked every time he saw her boobs. <laughs> A few weeks in, Rich told Lib he loved her. Lib replied with characteristic honesty, I don't love you yet, but I'm getting there. But she got there the very next day. They met each other's parents that Christmas. Rich vividly remembers meeting Lib's mum, Jill, in a dressing gown at the train station in Norwich. <laughs> Lib very vividly remembers not meeting Rich's mum over a tense Chinese. <laughs> when university ended, Rich moved to Norwich, moving into Five College Road with Ellie, Adam and Fran, where they lived for a couple of years. Lib's father, Lib and Ellie's father, Andy, tragically fell ill in 2015 and passed away a year later. It is a big deal to Lib that her dad, a brilliant but unconventional man, who did not always quickly warm to people, came to have such a close friendship with Rich. Lib and Rich spent Andy's final year living with him and describe it as both horrible and brilliant because that year revealed the strength of their relationship. Jodie Jones had been a best friend of Lib since high school already, but at this time it became clear beyond doubt that she was truly a Cunningham too selflessly helping out and becoming Rich's favourite person in the world in the yeah. process. <laughs> a year later, Rich and Lib decided to make a big life change and to look for teaching jobs internationally. Both secured jobs at Tembi International School in Malaysia. In their life in Asia, they spent every possible free moment travelling, hiking spectacular rainforests, eating spectacular dosa and diving spectacular depths. In an all new life with all new people, they became each other's family and best friend as well as partner. They became everything to each other. After two years in Malaysia, they moved to Madrid. And through cheap Mao and global pandemics, they made another group of amazing friends and received one extra special addition to their family on Rich's birthday four years ago. A gift they'd yearned for ever since they got together, their dog, Kipper. And they have been showering with him with affection in the face of his complete indifference ever since. <laughs> When Rich and Liv's story is told this way, people like me and, and Laura, one of her bridesmaids from Madrid, feel like we only came in at the end of it. And that seems incomprehensible because Rich and Liv are such central figures in our lives. Their flat has been a home to us in Madrid, literally in my case. And 
I think that like all key memories, it will feel like a part of us never moves on. Forever sitting around their table, having just enjoyed an incredible dinner and listening to Rich threaten to burn his own house down because he is losing a game of Catan. <laughs> In our crazy, dysfunctional family, school expat community here in Spain, Rich and Liv are nothing short of legends. They are genuine and open. They're socially inclusive and bring people together. And their incredible, instinctive, frequent kindness to their friends is only surpassed by how much fun they are. <laughs> Finally, the event that has led us all here today, the proposal. In January last year, Rich proposed to live for the eighth time, but the first soberly. <laughs> he had carefully planned a trip to Tangier, Morocco, in which he would propose to live by lantern light on the terrace of a beautiful hotel. But with the ring burning a heart-shaped hole in his pocket, he couldn't stop himself. On a rainy day in Madrid, he arrived home with Kit, <coughs> soaking wet, rang the doorbell and got down on one knee. Liv opened the door and he asked, will you marry me? Lib responded, is this a fucking joke? <laughs> Rich said, no. They both started to cry. And Lib said, yes. So Libby, you look beautiful as always. And we are so proud and honored to welcome you into our family formally. You've been with us for so long and you've been our calm voice of reason in a lot of very very tricky situations <laughs> not least of which the first i should have met you <laughs> didn't even better you didn't <laughs> uh, so today we truly honor you into our family and wish you every happiness health and prosperity for the future for a long long time oh, thank you. Uh, Go on, Libby. You can do it. Not good at this. <laughs> Libby, you look beautiful as always. From the first time I met you, I hoped this day would come. Today you make me very happy and proud to welcome you as my daughter into our family. Richard, welcome to the Cunningham Town. Cheers, mate. Uh, now that you've made a promise to Loops, although the vows haven't happened, sorry. Yes, <laughs> no, yeah. uh, now that you're making a promise to Loops, it's time for you to make a li few lifestyle changes and promises to us. <laughs> to honour some age-old family traditions that have been carried on for generations. Um, firstly, the very serious matter of bed rotting. <laughs> This will have to be done at least once a week, ideally with wine and bad TV. <laughs> Next, you're going to have to do some hyperbolic stories. Now, we know that you've lived a fascinating life already, but when you're regaling times of the past, we now expect exaggerations, euphemisms, and a few explosions thrown in for good measure. <laughs> there will also have to be a fair amount of bitching and moaning. That's what we do best. As this is the only true way Cunninghams know how to live and survive in the modern world. <laughs> we also love a bit of gossip, but yeah, we, we know shady. you already have this covered, Rich. <laughs> Yawns must be now incredibly loud, flatulence has to be forthright, and everything has to be done to a soundtrack of Anastasia, Elbow and Hall of Notes. <laughs> These are non-negotiables. But above all, the significance of becoming a Cunningham comes down to one thing, silliness. Morning, noon, night, quizzes, games and stupidity must be top of mind and shared at all times. But once again, you have this covered. <laughs> <laughs> you are a champion of silliness and that's why we love you so, and why you've always felt like family. And now our promises to you. We promise to feign interest when you <laughs> give us tales of the Ottoman Empire, the etymology of any language going, and your Duolingo daily streak. And steps up we well. promise to always have a space at our table for you both, be it for drinks, great dinners, long cries, cuddles, and to thrash, out, thrash you both at Catan. Good luck. We'll be on your team, and as the team grows... <laughs> You can do it. And as the team grows and changes, we all embrace everything life throws us together, good and bad. 
Jeez. When or if it happens, we promise to raise your children as if they're our own. <laughs> We will try, try, to respect your boundaries. <laughs> we will love your dog no matter how boring he is. <laughs> and we will do our best to see both sides of the argument. And we promise Richard, we promise Rich to love you like a brother and a son and the best of friends. But you already know that we've got that covered already. Welcome to the family, mate! <laughs> Perhaps not being is being, but without you, without your setting out to cut the noon like a blue flower, without your walking, walking later on across the bricks and the fog, without the light you carry in your hand, which maybe others will not see has turned to gold, that maybe nobody even knew was growing, like the red origin of a rose. Without your being in the end, without your coming, excitedly abruptly to know my life, gust of rose bushes, wheat of wind. And since then, I am because you are. And since then, you are, I am, we are. And for the love, I will be, you will be, and we will be. To Richard Vickers. M.A. <laughs> After 13 years, eight proposals, five different homes, three countries, it's hard to know where to begin. The milestones are all very significant, but my favourite bits are all the tiny spaces in between. The moments before the photos are taken, the endless flights to somewhere foreign or familiar, a squeezed hand under the table, raincoat grin grip zipped up to the chin, a mutual eye roll, Kip's head squished between our mutual kisses, winks across the star rooms, star room, <laughs> sorry, star rooms, tears wi wiped from cheeks, kitchen sink hugs, doors being held open where you always let me go first. For me, I love that you are a top history boy, a master of myths and a legend. I swell with pride at your ability to disarm people with your empathy, getting the biggest and burliest of blokes to open up and blossom. I love that you make incredible things happen. Our life is always full of plans of your devising, whether it's faraway beaches and undersea depths, too many bars, sun-drenched plathers, a million doblés, Hectic hikes and surprise birthday parties where friends are hidden in the cupboard. <laughs> Just brilliant things happen around you and all because of you. And I promise I'll always be grateful. For you, I vow that I will be our balance. When you're brutally logical, I will inject some emotion. And when your social tank is empty, I will offer some of my endless supply. <laughs> when you're on a roll, I will stand on the sidelines and cheer you on. Or at least try to. When you need it, I will give you time and space and compromise. And when you least deserve it, I will show you the most love because that is when you need me to. When you're wrong, I will tell you. <laughs> and most importantly, when I come home late, wobbling and giggly, I will always give you the gossip because you're a thirsty little bitch. <laughs> For us, I vow to always be faithful, to want more from each other, and to never settle for anything than a life full of fun. A life that means having dog hairs on every piece of clothing. And where we always have muddy boots in the back of the car. Where one minute we're screaming R&B songs at each other, and the next we're slow dancing in the kitchen. Where we relentlessly take the piss out of each other and I repeat your stories as if they are my own but make them much shinier. <laughs> <coughs> where we spend our summers in beautiful Mediterranean countries where I go brown and you go pink. <laughs> and where we take silliness seriously and no day is complete without a laugh, an impression or a scare. Ultimately, I promise to always be at your side. For all our time together, I have never doubted you or us for even a moment, which is pretty r remarkable 
and I know that I never will. My partner, my best friend, my dive buddy, my DJ and quiz master on long road trips, my emotional support animal, and <laughs> the absolute love of my life. Woo! Okay. Uh, I'm alright. Uh, I'm standing here today as confident and comfortable in my skin as I ever have been, although in, in spite of what I look like. Uh, <laughs> um, and I know that I have you to thank for a lot of that. For the past 13 years, you've challenged, supported, elevated, and excited me. So thank you. Ooh, okay. The promises that I make today are for our future together. And of course, I don't see them as traditional vows of obedience or commitment, um, because that would never work for either <laughs> of us. Uh, I don't think we could ever obey somebody just blindly. Um, secondly, I don't feel the need to further commit to you, as from the moment I swaggered your words, not mine, uh, over to you in the engine shed in Lincoln all those years ago, uh, you had me. Um, you've had me in my entirety Ooh, ever since. <laughs> okay, these then are promises about us, about how we move through life together at each other's side. They're about why I love you so fiercely, and about how I intend to ensure that the love we have for each other never falters. And if it does, these promises are about what I will do to renew it. These are promises that I intend to keep for as long as I'm able, or for as long as you'll have me. <laughs> okay. Uh, firstly, I promise to be grateful for you and for the little things that you do for your unfailing optimism, which can make any situation seem brighter, for seeing the best in people, even me, and even when I don't deserve it, for your sense of adventure, which has seen us visit some of the most beautiful places imaginable together, for your absolutely exceptional cooking, which allow us to travel from our sofa, even if we're not moving, uh, for your strength of character, your sense of fairness, your care for others. And finally, I promise to be grateful to you for making me laugh every day. Oh, cranky. Uh, for curating funny online videos and sharing them with me before bed, for using Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, or the odd pouch of the Caribbean quote in everyday life, <laughs> and for jumping out and scaring the absolute shit out of me when the <laughs> opportunity presents itself. Um, secondly, that was just one promise. Secondly, <laughs> promise, promise two. Um, I, <laughs> uh, I promise to continually strive to be the man that I think you deserve, to never give up on myself, to commit to staying healthy, whew, happy and good fun, and as look at the, and look as good as I can for you as long as I can. <laughs> um, to take every opportunity for self improvement, growth that comes my way, to ensure that you always have a reason to be proud to call me your husband. Whew. Yeah. Um, to be emotionally available. <laughs> Excuse me, crikey. <laughs> Very available. So available. Anybody wants to chat after? I'll listen. <laughs> right. Last one. Last bullet point. Uh, to be emotionally available. Uh, to practice empathy and compassion, and to approach our relationship with openness, honesty, and integrity. Um, and finally, I promise to nurture our relationship always. To never walk out on an argument, even when you're clearly winning. And to try and never go to bed angry, because a day spent annoyed with each other is a day wasted. I promise to keep planning adventures six to eight months in advance. <laughs> Pushing us to have the most fun possible. I promise to continue to create intricate and unnecessary, yet perfectly formatted Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> uh, outlying de uh, payment details and travel plans, and to involve as many of our wonderful friends as I can. I promise to value our time together. Ensuring that even when we're at our busiest and our most tired, or our most ill, when all we can manage is to sit in front of the TV, that those, those moments are filled with warmth, affection and closeness. I promise to stand by your side and support you in pursuing all of your future ambitions and goals. Life will undoubtedly demand more from you at times, and in those moments I'll be there to create the space you need. Whew. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Um, your aspirations will become mine, and mine yours shared and supported and we will achieve them together. Lib, these are my promises to you. We've already had 13 amazing years together. They've been filled with adventure, laughter and love and I'm very excited to continue life with you by my side, albeit now in a more official capacity, <laughs> as your loving husband. Yeah. <laughs> have an
now heard each other's promises. You've made them in the presence of the people you love the most. And so, Liberty Paris Cunningham, do you take Richard John Vickers to be your husband? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Richard John Vickers, do you take Liberty Paris Cunningham to be your wife? Yes, absolutely. You've heard each other's promises, accepted them, and sealed <coughs> the bond with your rings. So by the power vested in me, as the bloke you asked to do this, <laughs> I now pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> For those that don't know me and Richard, we always have our own unwritten love story. <laughs> However, it was too late for us, seeing as we met officially on my wedding day to Ian. But I know we always both wonder what could have been. <laughs> However, it's time I step aside and let you be happy. Begrudgingly. <laughs> All joking aside, you are simply perfect for my best friend, and you are perfect together. One of the things I admire the most about you, Richard, is how you've always shown commitment and support. So, commitment and support for not only Libby, but our whole family. Through some of the most difficult times of their lives, you've been an absolute rock. I also value our friendship greatly. <laughs> When we have our moments together, <laughs> I always feel we have discussions open and honestly, and I always appreciate the empathy and kindness that you show me. I'm so grateful you've come to Libby's life, and I know how much you adore her, but I really want you to know we adore you too. <laughs> Libby. You look so beautiful today, and it has been such an honour to not only stand by your side today, but for the last 20 years. <laughs> I cannot put into words how special you, Ellie, and our mother <laughs> are to us, but are to me. All my memories are entwined with all four of you. You're my strength. You've given me a sense of belonging, and you are my safe place. <laughs> and you've helped shape the person that I am today, and you're just simply my family. Something which me and Libby have in common is that we're both Harry Potter enthusiasts. Libby has always felt that she's very much a Hufflepuff, and I have to say that I agree this is where she should be placed under the sorting hat. The characteristics of a Hufflepuff are loyalty, which she often displays to Kip on a daily basis, and he gives her absolutely nothing back. <laughs> Patience. <laughs> Patience, which you have to have when Richard is frequently discussing the etymology of all or any language. You value friendship, and throughout our friendship, wherever you are in the world, all the length of time that we've been apart, you've always been a constant, we've always been a constant for one another. And our friendship just picks up right where it was left off. Every time. <laughs> You're hard working, and um, this is just reflected in everything that you do. And I'm so, so proud of you. <laughs> um, the passion, dedication, and enthusiasm you have for literature and teaching will stay with your students forever, I'm sure. You're known for being humble and not always competitive, unless it's a game of Catan and someone steals your bricks. That's when the evil slippers in. <laughs> and I've been trying to think of what character Libby would fit in with Harry Potter, and I feel she carries a lot of traits of a few. So she has the hair of Hagrid, <laughs> the loyalty of Snape, the weirdness of Luna, the dorkiness of Level Long Longbottom and the intelligence of Hermione and the wisdom of Dumbledore. However, a resigning feature that I always think of when I think of Libby is the energy and light that she brings to a room. <laughs> and so maybe it's not that she's a particular person at all, it's just that she's simply magic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
This is now a new chapter in your life together. And you're coming back to Norwich. Yay! <laughs> and you've had so many adventures around the world together. And I know there are still so many more to come. We can all see your love for each other is the real deal. And know through any challenges or obstacles you might face, through all the highs and joys you experience, I will always be there for you both. So can we please raise a glass for my brother and my sister, Livia Rick. Rich, as I'm sure you all know, because he's probably told you, is uh, level B1 in Spanish now. Right? Very, very impressive. Yeah. He, uh, he talks absolute shite in two languages now. And just shows you how much I love you. I've written a love song. A, a cappella. Are you ready? I'm joking, of course. I'm sure. Ah, has he laughed yet or, or not? I see. Oh, we'll jump straight to the toast then. Mission accomplished. Um, okay, uh, before I go any further, uh, and I'll tell you a little bit more about how Rich and I met and somehow got to this point today. Um, Rich has been incredibly nervous um, this morning. He actually went on what was to be a 5k run that turned into a 10 mile or 10k ultra marathon I think across uh, across the mountains um, on behalf of all of the best men and I'm sure I'll speak for them uh, we're so proud of what you've done and accomplished today and we absolutely love you uh, Richard Bickers yeah. you will always be a dickhead in our eyes um, reluctantly, I accepted Rich as a friend about 17 years ago uh, at the prestigious University of Lincoln. I was introduced to him through his housemate, Faye. Um, Faye and I were on the same course together, along with fellow best man and my namesake over there, Jackson. We'd gone round to Faye's uh, for free drinks before a controversial pimps and hose night. She, uh, she looks absolutely incredible. Fishnet tights and a lurry look at top and legs to die for. Not Faye, Richard. He was dressed as a filthy hill. You absolute slut. Rich being from Gainsborough, me from Rotherham, we both quickly realised we had a lot of things in common. Namely drinking, listening to second-rate music, questionable comedy, and often being aggrieved by the general public. <laughs> I think it's both been away from home in an exotic and uh, cosmopolitan university city of Lincoln. We found solace and comfort in one of um, one of this company. After 70 years of knowing someone, you get a good grasp of the person, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now with Rich, the ugly is of course obvious. Um, but let, let me share with you some good and certainly some bad observations of Mr. Richard John Biggs. He's grown to become a worldly fascinating and actually quite intelligent middle-aged man. A far cry from the idiot I first met. We all know now Richard's deepest passions are history, politics, and it's, as it's been mentioned numerous times already, etymology. How do you know Richard's into etymology? I'm going to put that out to everyone. Because he fucking talks about it all the time. <laughs> Kev, do you know the history behind the word there? Have a fucking day off. <laughs> I sometimes wonder how have you ended up as the person you are today? I mean, you teach hi history to the children of some of Spain's elite public figures and dignitaries. You. The lad who used to piss into a two litre bottle of Robinson squash. Because he couldn't be asked to go to the downstairs toilet at this house. You, the boy. <laughs> There's a theme here. It's all about getting his todger out and relieving the Um The boy who once took a slash into the majestic Braver Pool of Lincoln and when caught in the act by local police and asked for his name replied, David Crockett, in defiance of the law and carried on relieving himself anyway. You, the man, caught mid fellatio on the back streets of Cost Town by an elderly resident and shooed away by a postman. 
emerging from two parked cars with your boxer shorts around your ankles. Gleason, who was fucking hell! There's only one answer to my previous question, and that's the God only knows how she managed to see through your many foibles back then. But meet and live, as I'm sure everyone will agree, was the best thing to ever happen to you. Libby, you look absolutely stunning. Rich, you are massively, massively punchy. <laughs> I mean, working on the beam is considered one of life's biggest miracles. But Lib, you say an idea today is sure to challenge that. Individually, you two of the most charismatic, warm, and wholesome people, Laura and I, have the pleasure of calling friends. Together, though, you're a remarkable couple. Gosh, you are. Um, Rich will be the first concede that you've had such a profound impact on shaping him into the man he is today. The man I've always loved as a friend, but a man I now admire for the life you've cultivated together since I left him behind at uni. You're in us a joy list, and Rich is incredibly lucky to have you now as his wife. One of our favourite things about you two, which totally encapsulates who you are, is your scare prank on Rich. Whenever you post a new video on Instagram, Laura and I are always in stitches, in stitches uh, watching it together. Now, I was going to try and orchestrate something to scare the shit out of you, um, but given the way that we're placed, it, it can't really happen. So I'll replace that with, in homage to you, Liv, anyone that gets the best scare prank of Rich this evening and submits that can win a little prize. As I mentioned, Laura and I got married um, a little over two years ago. Now, Rich, you have forever educated me with either some cock and bull story about the Spanish Civil War or warning me of the dangers of conservative government. <laughs> Unless it's music, I seldom teach you the ways of the world. But with my two years of experience in marriage, let me at least lend some advice to you here. Think about today, every day, for the rest of your lives. It's special filled with love and only the things that really matter in today's world. Never go to sleep on an argument either. Get out of your system, bang a makeup, and always kiss each other goodnight. Before I say goodnight to you all, one final thing from me. Along with Liv, I'd like to say on behalf of the Groom's Party, just how stunning and incredible the bridesmaids have been today. After this, you're all bound to get hammered and let yourselves go. So I thought I'd get that in now. Here's to a wonderful evening, everyone. I'm off to the bar to wash away the remainder of my anxiety. But for now, a toast to our friends and the wonderful Mr. and Mrs. Rich and Libby. On with the show! Hi everyone, I'm Ellie, the other one. Uh, so this is my first speech but, uh, ever, but I guess it's very fitting because me and Libby have had almost all of our firsts together. We had our first breaths, our first steps, our first grazed knees, our first albums, mine was Craig David, born to do it. <laughs> Libby had dreadful taste, even back then, it was Barbie Girl by Aqua. <laughs> our first boyfriends, our first breakups, our first taste of drugs and festivals and forming real friendships along the way. And now our first husbands! What a fine crop they are! <laughs> Uh, so everybody else won't really understand this, but having a twin is incredibly special and unique. Every moment is shared, and I am just so lucky I share it with you. I always tell Adam that I had two soulmates, and well, way before I fell for this one, um, we've always been one for each other. Um, she's been my partner in everything, even sometimes when we weren't even wanting each other there. <laughs> um, 
It's always been the twins, Ellie and Libby, Tibbs and Bean. <laughs> so being your twin has been absolutely incredible. She's always been my partner. We always have someone to confide in and always someone to pitch to when all of you get really annoying. <laughs> now we all know that Libby is an incredible teacher, but she has been teaching me some life lessons way before she ever stepped foot in a classroom. Hello? Uh, so firstly, she's taught me how to play second fiddle. Because quite frankly, our mums dressed us the same, we have the same face, same almost body, although she got the tits. Um, I always think I've brought a bit more pizzazz to every occasion. I've always, you know, a little je ne sais quoi. And she's always just been so gracious and humble, just falling into the background <laughs> in my shadow. No, not really. We have always very humbly shared the spotlight, I think. Um, but also, but not once. She's also taught me how not to seek attention. Now, some of you know, may know this story already, but when we were younger, I was about eight years old, we were on a sailing holiday. Sailing, we were on a, one of them long boats. Bad weather, I'm out on a boat, on the Norfolk Broads, and I fell in, and the boat kept on going. Mum was completely unaware. <laughs> and uh, I ended up floating for a while, clinging to some reeds, and then I got fetched a ride on another person's boat. Um, and then I made the local newspaper. <laughs> it was the, a few times. Really, really it was the National Daily Mail. And the wonderful. Daily Mail. <laughs> <laughs> and also we got a call up from ITV, but Mum did a gracious, like, oh, we're not doing television, and I was furious. <laughs> we, got a, we got a ride on a police speedboat as well, because poor Ellie, she must have been so scared. The police diver was to die for. Mum really fancied the police diver, and he fancied her back. <laughs> And so all, I was getting all of this attention, media attention, and Libby was a little bit worse for wear from all of this, a bit upset, so she ended up calling the police on my mum and me. What's the problem? Oh, it's just that we've just had a phone call from Liberty to say that um, she's fallen down the stairs, she thinks she's broken her leg, foot or leg, and um, we all down the pub. <laughs> how to love unconditionally and of course by this I'm making reference to her dog because no matter how boring Kipper is how much he brings absolutely nothing to any social situation <laughs> having no personality she still loves him unconditionally it's a real feat it's a real feat uh, Libs also taught me how to put the fun in funerals oh god <laughs> when we memorialised our mad and magnificent dad Together, we taught each other how to celebrate the best and the worst bits of everyone and absolutely squeeze every last drop out of a situation. It was truly, out in my 34 years, I don't think I've ever thrown a party as good as that. And it was truly because we did it together and we did it really well. <laughs> So she taught me how to throw a party. She also taught me how to steal cigarettes from mum. She taught me how easy it is to make Richard jump, which I think we're all very grateful for. She taught me how to travel the world, how to wash an elephant and eat roti chennai. She taught me that English is truly an international language because she's lived all over and she hasn't learned a fucking word. <laughs> taught me how to inspire others, be it in a classroom or on a dance floor or on World Book Day where no other fucker dresses up. She <laughs> always inspires light and laughter wherever she goes. Her inconceivable way to stay absolutely positive and laugh at all of the little things in between just absolutely amazes me and probably everybody else along the way. And when it comes to these two, uh, it's very clear, Ona was mentioned in the ceremony, that it, none of this would be happening if it wasn't for me. <laughs> I did it! Let's just all remember whose day this is. <laughs> so I, I obviously heard Libby talk about Richard for months on end and didn't shut up about it. We lived together, she was very annoying. And uh, then... Finally, she points him out at, the, at our union, 
And I walked up to him and said, for the love of God, do something about it. And he was bold as brass. Yep, yep. And then it all happened. As Adam once said, it was less of a meat cue and more of a meat packing situation. <laughs> when you first met me, Richard, you were convinced that I didn't like you. And this is probably down to the fact that he moved into our shared home after one night, after one shack. And I then took it upon myself, because of the very thin walls, to absolutely try and sabotage every single night of lovemaking they had when we lived together. I used to slide things under the door, <laughs> and I used to constantly take the mic. But I think now, Richard, you now know that I fucking adore you. <laughs> I love your long stories. I love your silly dance moves. I love your hairbone plans and your absolutely wild imagination. I always learn something from you, and you always leave me in stitches. I can't, I can't think of another attribute that I would find more suited to Libby. Um, apart from your constant obsession with the national and with Father Dom <laughs> <laughs> So. <laughs> Uh, being a part of our family, you've elevated it, not just by c a couple of IQ points, but in absolutely every way. You're my brother and my best friend, and you have been for years, and to repeat what Libby said to him at my wedding, like, we're just making this official, we have been family for absolute years, and haven't we done well? <laughs> and because Libby loves poetry, and I'm a little bit unoriginal. I've written a poem for you guys. <laughs> it's called I Am From My Sis. Of course, not up the nose that one. <laughs> 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 oh. Okay. Uh, we are from pink wallpaper with yellow polka dots. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent choice. Uh, we're from matching outfits down to the muffs. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Glowing cupboards and sacred scarred swimming lessons. From mum's cheese and potato pie, cold Morris nose nudges and skydiving dickers. <laughs> We're from third shelter, grand openings, mushroom beers, cold fingers at the Phoenix swimming pool. <laughs> Story there. You got, you no, 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 uh, no, 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 we left our mark on Glowworm Caves, Bosnian nightclubs, and Balinese seabeds. She left her mark on boys with cherub curls, heavy shitters, and some other skinny fools. <laughs> she is from an exceptionally proud group of gals, one mad and loving dad who would have loved to have been here to see this take place. He is from Gainsborough. <laughs> from big belly laughs and huge hearts and a family full of pranks and silliness that has encouraged us all to this day. They are from cathedrals atop steep hills, fine cities, malaccas and sun-kissed plathers. They're from underwater hand signals, long study masters, and late night heart to hearts and endless laughter. They have changed for the better. Richard now likes olives, and Libby's finally got funny. <laughs> <laughs> they have carried us all in their life changing adventures and counsel and friendship, and they deserve one another. I am so lucky to have you both. I'm a better person just by osmosis, and I love you two. You're both at home. I can't see what's can't wait to see what's next. That's me. <laughs> So um, me and Libby want to thank all of you for making the effort to be here. Uh, we recognise that our decision to have an outrageous three day wedding in Spain uh, <laughs> means that you've all had to take holiday, you've had to travel very far to be here, we have people from all over, which is amazing. And we know that obviously um, that effort was difficult and so we want to thank you all for that. 
Uh, we're all, sorry, we are both deeply touched that everybody, so many people have made the journey. Um, and yeah, we are very touched by that. Did I say that? I think I did. Yeah. Okay, a bit pretty nervous. Uh, now on to personal thanks. Okay, Jill. Oh, uh. Jill, 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 Jill. He's never been nice to me anyway. Well, Your genetic contributions to the world are, are greatly appreciated. Uh, particularly by myself and Adam. Uh, and I think I can say everyone else who needs your So, on behalf of us all, Thank you for your not insignificant role in producing these monozygotic marvels. Uh, I truly appreciate you making the effort to be here. Um, yeah, I know that it meant a lot for uh, Libby that you came, and it's amazing that you're here. Swivel. Oh. Uh, my mum and dad, this wedding literally couldn't have happened without you. Uh, from financial bailouts to <laughs> midnight collections in Sheffield after too many beers and Kev abandoned me. Um, <laughs> to, yeah, I remember. I'll not forget that. Um, to supporting mine and Lib's globe trotting, um, you've helped us both so much with everything. Um, I'm just so grateful to call you both my parents. Uh, to all of the bridesmaids and the best men, I know there's quite a few of you. Um, so, thank you for being our friends, uh, simply. Um, you're amazing people, we love you all very much. Uh, in particular, thank you to Adam, Ben, uh, I did say Paul, but he's not here, so just Adam and Ben, uh, for, <laughs> uh, for planning um, my various cross-continental stag events. Uh, thank you to Laura and Ellie for planning Libby's cross-continental uh, hen events. Uh, Fran, where are you, there you are, look. Um, for your beautiful reading during the ceremony, Kev, uh, there is a career as a stand-up for you yet, mate. Um, and uh, finally, obviously, Jodie, um, you are... Yeah, it just says the love of my life here. Jodie. Where's Ben? Uh, final thank you to Ben. Uh, where are you, mate? Oh, there you are, hello. Hey! Uh, hello, it's Ben. Uh, final thank you to Ben. Uh, you've become one of mine and Libby's best friends over the past few years. Um, we couldn't think of anyone better to marry us, and you did it wonderfully. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you. Very much. Um, so, if I could just ask everyone to raise a glass to everybody who made this wedding happen. Uh, thanks. Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to take a moment now to remember somebody who isn't here with us today. Um, if he was. He would be probably very uncomfortably sat at this yeah. cocktail. Uh, Eleven bongs in. Uh, yeah, buzzing his tits off. He's sitting off every five minutes to go check his eBay watch list. And to see if he was still the high bidder on those silver spoons that he absolutely didn't fucking need. <laughs> Obviously, um, I'm on about Andy. Um, so, Lib, L, every day. Ooh. I can manage this. That's uh, fine. It's not <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Lib and L, every day you honour the memory of your dad, embodying everything that was good about him. I know that uh, were I know that were he here with us today, he'd be overflowing with <laughs> overflowing with pride at the remarkable, worldly, strong and successful woman you've both become. Uh, I hope too that Andy's absence encourages us all to reflect on the importance of valuing every moment. And, and to embrace all of the opportunities that oh, life presents us. Yes. To Andy. Yes, to Andy. You absolutely are. <laughs> okay. Now on to my lovely wife. I struggle there. Um, as I mentioned earlier, me and Lib have been together for over 13 years. And it has just been remarkable. Um, there's nobody here that can attest to this, um, but I do remember the first day I saw Lib. Um, I was, like, smitten. It was, to me, love at first sight. Uh, I thought she was really cool as well, uh, which obviously, <laughs> hindsight tells me. <laughs> That's not true. Uh, <laughs> um, but she turned up to uni, she was wearing, a, like, a beret or a woolly hat or something. Oh, yeah, beret. she was really driving a fixie, smoking roll-ups. <laughs> uh, wearing brown leather cowboy boots. Now I was just like, bloody hell, like, who is this? Uh, and so, yeah, and I went back to my house that day and I told everybody. I was like, this girl is perfect. Um, 
And it took a year for us to actually begin chatting. She was with some libertine wannabe. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's said to have some really deep emotional trauma, didn't it? Um, and, <laughs> and I was with uh, kind of a, a semi-professional netball player who was just very bad for me. Uh, <laughs> but when we did, uh, when we did get chatting uh, a year later, it, it, as has been alluded to, it moved really, really, really fast. Uh, I went around to stay one night uh, with, as Ben said, a bag of boxer shorts and a glisten in my eye, and I never, I never left. Um, that was in November 2010, and then within a few months I decided, yeah, I'm going to move to Norwich. Um, this girl is worth it. <laughs> so, fast forward to December 22. Um, Twelve years together, and it felt like the right time to do something special, and I proposed. Well, I decided to propose at that moment. Excuse me. So I had it all planned. Uh, the ring was on its way from New York, with the clandestine help of Ellie. Thank you, mate, for that. A uh, lovely hotel in Tangier was booked um, for the weekend. I was going to propose surrounded by the sounds and smells of the souk under Moroccan lanterns with a wonderful view of the Straits of Gibraltar and a glass of champagne in hand. Uh, it was going to be amazing, but it did not happen. <laughs> um, uh, unsurprisingly, my impatience got the better of me. Um, and once the ring arrived at work, uh, on a rainy January Thursday, and once I paid the additional 150 euros tax bill, <laughs> having not corre uh, correctly read import tax, small print, uh, there was only one thing that was actually going to happen. Uh, Lip had gone home early from school, or you were ill, I don't know, what was it? Well, I don't know, it matter. Um, and I had gone to collect the dog. Um, when I arrived home, uh, soggy, kip in tow, I knocked on the door, got down on one knee, and uh, I actually don't remember what I said, as in those moments you don't, uh, but I distinctly remember Libby said to me, uh, is this a fucking joke? Uh, <laughs> she was wearing her characteristic hibernation pajamas, uh, which she generally doesn't get out of for the kind of the winter months. Um, <laughs> uh, some really big woolly slippers as well. And um, yeah, the kid was being typically intense, wasn't he? I was on one knee. He was scratching at both of us. He was scratching my face. Actually, cut me. I think. And uh, yeah, obviously. It wasn't a fucking joke, because <laughs> here we are, <laughs> having, having made quite a lot of effort. So, a uh, little on to my wife. Um, looking, yeah, what? Hi! Hi. 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 Right. Oh, I think it's gone. So, looking at you today, um, I see everything that I could have ever hoped for in a partner. I also remember all of the amazing times that we've already had together. Um, our first holiday in Marrakesh in 2011, getting pink eye after a horse farted on my face. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, there's, there's a picture, it's, 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 it's awful, it really is. It really is. Um, piggybacking you over the threshold of our new home in 2013, uh, walking around Amsterdam in 2014, uh, having bought a pre rolled and then just being convinced that everybody was robbing us. Uh, we were so, so hard. And, oh, oh, bloody hell, Lewis. Oh, no. yeah. always Lewis. Safety first, mate. Um, stepping off the plane in Singapore in 2007 and realising that, shit, this is where we live now for the next two years. And then coming home from work on, our, on my birthday in 2020 to find you and our little puppy at home. Um, when I look at you, I also see the future and all of the potential that it holds. And I see us again at our table in Marlborough Road, having beers with our pals. Um, I see us reacquainting ourselves with Norwich, pubs, restaurants. I see us walking on Norfolk's beautiful beaches in the rain. Uh, Kipper running around us and, yeah, probably ignoring us. I, I see a family, I see kids, I see loads of...